Today I'm going to tell you something about circles. Okay, so you know, some things in math we do because like we're trying to solve a problem, right? Like we want to get a rocket ship to the moon or whatever. <laughs> and some things in math we do because we've just been doodling on a piece of paper and wondering what's going on. So this is more in the like paper doodling category. Here's the basic question. Can I fill up, let's say, an infinite sheet of paper with circles? The way that I've said this to you, this seems really obvious, right? <laughs> like I just draw a bunch of circles, I can draw as many as I want, I cover the entire sheet of paper. But if I impose some rule, like say I don't want any two of the circles to touch each other, right? To like overlap or even share a single point in common, then this is a much less obvious question. This is called a partition, by the way, when we don't allow them to touch each other. The very first thing I'm gonna have to do is draw one circle. So once I've drawn this one circle, then I have actually now two questions to ask. One is, can I cover up the inside of the circle with circles? The other is, can I cover up the outside of the circle with circles? Now, one of those two questions is actually pretty easy to solve. If I wanna cover up the outside of the circle with circles, I can just do this. So take the same center for all my circles and just increase the radius. Of course, you want to imagine that I'm doing this for every possible <laughs> size of circle bigger than my first one, but that'll cover up the entire outside of the first circle that I drew. And since trying to answer this question always starts with a first circle, <laughs> we can always do this sort of infinite piece of the paper is not really any problem. So the question really then is I have this disc inside of a circle how can I cover it up with a bunch of circles that don't touch each other? The first thing you might wanna do is just like on the outside, just shrink your circle sizes to cover up all of the points inside of this disc. There's a little problem <laughs> with that plan, which is what happens at the end of that game, right? So we have these smaller circles, but we're never going to get a circle that covers this center point. But you say, well, 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 well. <laughs> <laughs> I only tried this particular covering of the disc. So maybe instead, why don't I put like a circle here and a circle there and maybe a circle like this with different centers and different sizes. It turns out that the answer is that you actually cannot do this. <laughs> Okay, you are always going to miss at least one point when you try to cover the inside of a circle, so the disc, with circles that don't touch each other. And the reason why is because of almost exactly the same thing that goes wrong <laughs> with my red circles. If I start trying to cover a disc like this with circles, well, let's think about this center point. If I can cover this disc with circles, that center point has to live on one of them. Now, the circle that it lives on, whatever it is, say this big, it can't be too large, right? Because if the, the width of this circle, the diameter of this circle was large enough, then it would run into my first circle. So that forces a size restriction on the circle containing this center point. But that second circle has its own center point. So we draw the center there, and that's gotta be in some circle too, but it has to have pretty small width as well. And so when I keep looking at these centers, whatever circles they lie on, the widths are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And so we're all shrinking down. And at the end of the process, we're gonna end up with a single point here, just like in the original example, that cannot lie on any of the circles. All right, so we cannot cover this plane, right? This two dimensional space with circles. Why don't we add a dimension and work with space instead? Once you do that, you can <laughs> cover the entire three-dimensional space with circles. It's not gonna have some sort of simplification like this where I cut it into an infinite piece and a finite piece. Because if I think about a circle <laughs> living in space, right, I've got everything sort of all around <laughs> my circle. I don't have two separate pieces that the circle cuts space into. Okay, but this is actually to our benefit. So let me show you how to do this. We're moving to three dimensions. We need a whole new piece of paper, <laughs> right? So here's say two dimensions and here is my magical coming out of the paper, <laughs> third dimension. If I think about a, three uh, a two dimensional sphere living in our three dimensional space, right? So, you know, like a globe or something, <laughs> just the surface of a globe. Um, if I remove two points, from that sphere, then I get something that I can cover with circles. So here's my best sphere. Let's take away these two points, okay? I'm gonna partition my sphere into circles just by drawing circles around these missing points. Again, there's lots and lots of these, infinitely many of them, but hopefully you can see that they sort of stack on top of each other to hit every point on the sphere that's not one of my two X's. So this is the, the trick that we're going to use. Any sphere 
when we get rid of two points, can be covered by circles. We're gonna take our three-dimensional space and I'm gonna put some initial circles on there. So let's put some coordinates. All right, so I'm gonna draw an initial set of circles in my three-dimensional space, but actually it's just gonna be like in those first two dimensions. I'm not even gonna think about the direction coming out of the paper yet. So here's one and here's another one. Ah, it's supposed to be a circle. <laughs> okay, so all these sort of width two, radius one circles with centers on these integer coordinate points, right? So I've got these circles sort of spaced out on the flat part of my three-dimensional space. How this helps me now is if I draw a sphere centered at the red point here, okay? Then let's think about how my red sphere that I drew hits the black circles that I drew first. The black circles all live in this flat part of space given you know the desktop or the brown paper right and so the circles on the brown paper the sphere that i drew will only touch the circles exactly where it hits the brown paper too right so i want to think about slicing my sphere off <laughs> right by the, where the brown paper is and look at what happened here so how many points did i hit any of my black circles i hit two points that was just for the example that I drew, but actually if you sort of stare at my construction, the location of my circles were chosen very carefully so that any sphere that I draw that's centered at this red point will hit exactly twice one of the black circles. And so that's how I get my circle covering of this three-dimensional space. First I draw this family of black circles. They go on in every direction. <laughs> and then I draw every single sphere that's centered at this red point. Now any of those spheres can then be covered by circles by themselves. And so each of those spheres can be covered by all of these circles and putting them all together, <laughs> I get a way to cover the entire three-dimensional space with circles. Then you might ask, why am I caring so much about circles? A circle after all is just like the collection of points in a two-dimensional space, which are some fixed distance away from a center. Well, that's actually what a sphere is too, if I'm in three-dimensional space instead of two-dimensional space. So maybe the right question to ask is, can I cover three-dimensional space with spheres that don't touch each other? In fact, for almost exactly the same reason that we couldn't do the two-dimensional space with circles, you cannot cover the three-dimensional space with two-dimensional spheres. You're always gonna have something left, <laughs> no matter what you try to do. Two-dimensional spheres can be used to cover five-dimensional space, but this very simple, well, okay, a little complicated, but if you stare at it for a little while, it's not so bad. This very simple construction for circles in R3 has not so far provided a guide for how we might expand that up a dimension for spheres in R4, right? Four dimensional space. In general, I think the question is, is not completely known about if you take a sphere in some number of dimensions <laughs> and you take a space of some number of dimensions, when can you say it's possible to partition the space into spheres of that dimension? What are the prime divisors of each element of this sequence look like? That seems like a harder question. <laughs> well, it might be a harder question depending on how specific you want to get. But so what I mean by the prime divisors of elements of the sequence is we have these factors. So each number factors into prime numbers as long as we're ignoring zero here. So three is already prime. So this is actually a really good point. This is exactly what I wanna talk about, is that if you just randomly do this, choose some number C, 